夠宗教法定人數。Good afternoon, members. It is time to start the meeting, and we have also formed a quorum. So I call to order the subcommittee on frontier closed area amendment order 2013 and frontier closed area permission to enter amendment notice 2013. First item on the agenda: uh, election of chairman. Nominations, please. Who would like to become the chair? Mr. Wong Kwok Kim. Mr. Yip Kwok Him, Mr. Yip, do you accept the nomination? Sorry, we we need a seconder. You may second. Yes, I will be the seconder. Mr. Yip, do you accept the nomination? Yes, I do. Then I have to ask the routine question: Are there other nominations? No. Then, as Mr. Yip, would you like to come forward and take up the chairmanship? All right. At this stage, maybe we invite the team from the administration to join us. Mr. Dennis Kwok has applied to join the subcommittee. He has missed the deadline, namely the twenty seventh of April, midnight. He missed the deadline for membership application. So maybe we can hear、uh, his requests, and、um, do you find it acceptable? All right, thank you. All right, the subcommittee decides to accept Mr. Dennis Quark application to join, despite the late application. All right.、Uh, would like to invite the team from the administration to join us. And then, for this、um, legal notice, I think it's a simple one, but perhaps would cause some concerns among the members. So I'll wait for the admin to get the seat, and then we can open the discussion. Well, it is quite specific as far as the content is concerned, because this is about the boundary. Uh, Fine tuning the boundary and where it should lie properly. I don't know whether we can finish the job within one meeting. In attendance, we have the following public officers: Mr. Vic Yao, Principal Assistant Secretary from the Security Bureau; Mr. Hakin. Tang, AS for security, Mr. Yip Kin Chow, District Commander, Border Acting. Is it Chow or Chow Chow? From the Hong Kong Police Force. Also from the Police Force, we have Mr. Steve Lam, Senior Superintendent of Police, as well as Miss Francoise Lam. Senior Assistant Lord Rossman from the Department of Justice and Mr. Raymond Wong, Assistant Director of Planning, from the PD. Thank you for your at、uh, attendance. Maybe first of all, I'd like to give the floor to Mr. Vic Yao, the PS Security, to walk us through the content of the、um, LNs. Mr. Chairman, this is to implement the second stage of the frontier close area reduction. Well, having consulted the public extensively in year 2008, we announced the proposal to reduce the FCA. We try to、uh, reduce it to the minimum necessary for the protection of public order, so that most people do need a close area permit to access the area. To implement the project, as far as the boundary patrol road is concerned, we need to construct a fence, and then at different sections,、um, the progress would be different. So we've got three phases, and phase one has already been completed. The easternmost section, as well as the easternmost section of the FCA. 
those sections have been completed. That is those between Maipu and Lok Machau, BCP, as well as the place between Limahang and Sha Tao Kok. And that was already completed and implemented on the 15th of February 2012. Um, for the second stage, in fact, the fence for the Boundary Patrol Road has almost been completed, and that's why we have introduced the subsidiary legislation. First of all, we would like to amend the FCA order. This is because for the FCA in Hong Kong, well, in fact, under the FCA order, we do go to meticulous details to define the boundary of the FCA. So with a reduction of the FCA, we need to amend the boundaries in the order. And as a consequential amendment, we need to amend the FCA permission to enter notice. This is to spell out who may be permitted to F to enter the FCA without the closed area permit. We're mainly talking about transit uh, vehicles, um, I mean drivers and passengers from the uh, cross-boundary vehicles. For individual um, boundary crossing points, um, well, we have specified routes. So we say that uh, they have to start from a specific point along the boundary. Um, going all the way directly to a particular BCP. And uh, we are making changes to the FCA, and therefore uh, there will be consequential amendments to the starting points of the specified routes uh, to which the permission to enter notice applies. We take this opportunity to revise the description of the routes as well as the grid system, and the new one will make it more uh, accurate. If you do give approval, um, this will come into effect on the 10th of June this year, and then the six villages in that area will see that the villages benefiting uh, from the reduction. It's the final stage of the reduction, which is the third one, that is from Mutong River to Lin Ma Hang. Work is still underway. It is expected to be implemented in 2015. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yao. Perhaps uh, we can then have a discussion of the amendment order as well as the amendment notice. Would I to start first, Mr. Kwok? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There was a paper from the development panel. Uh, this is called Hong Kong 2030 Long Term Vision and Strategies. Uh, sorry, would you like to remove your telephone because it has been ringing for a number of times? Uh, I think many people are concerned about the definition for freedom of movement. So we're concerned about the question of freedom of movement into and out of the frontier close area. We want to know um, how we are going to monitor the freedom of movement. In that paper, mention was also made about the freedom to import labor from the mainland. We want to know whether the same problem would um, arise. If there is a problem, how is it going to be resolved? Mr. Yao, well, freedom of movement. Well, for the FCA, it is being defined by the FCA order, and the purpose is to uh, facilitate law enforcement and to prevent illegal immigration. Area falling within the FCA means that for anybody to go into or out of that area, you need a closed area permit. Like if a resident is living within the uh, FCA, then you need to get a permit. If you are a worker uh, engaged in a particular works project, even for temporary uh, entry, you need a permit. Except um, 
boundary crossing passengers and drivers, and that's why we have cap 245H in order to provide for an exemption. So for others, for local residents and for visitors uh, engaged in works projects, they need a CAP uh, before the reduction of the FCA, you need the CAP. Otherwise, uh, that is once an area has been excised from the FCA, you no longer need a permit to go in and out on a daily basis. So when it comes to freedom of movement, it means that the people of Hong Kong can move in and out of that area freely. So it doesn't mean that uh, between Hong Kong and mainland there is freedom of movement. No, no, no. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This, uh, in relation to the boundary control, it won't be affected by this amendment exercise at all. And this amendment exercise is only related to the reduction of the FCA. There's no change in the immigration policy. In other words, for some areas, uh, the CAP is no longer required, Mr. Kwok. The second question is about the freedom of importation of labor. Will this give rise to such a problem? No. No, uh, no, this is only about the boundaries of the FCA. Mr. Yu Shi Wing, for NXF, that is about the economic impact or the economic implications. Well, a lot of land will be released. Uh, it will mainly be for the purpose of conservation, and some area will be deployed for other uses like high education, high tech industries, and cultural and creative industries. So I want to know what is the plan on the part of the government, and then will there be any negative impact on the environment? If not. I want to know whether we can develop eco-tourism, like uh, cycling tourism. Uh, I think we have a lot of potential because on the other side of the river in Shenzhen, um, they have a lot of high-rise buildings. So I don't know whether there's any plan to turn the area into um, a spot for eco-tourism. And what about the public expenditure to be incurred has approval been given. And then in paragraph 18, mention is made about Chongying Street. I don't know if the administration, I, I think phase one has been completed. I want to know whether further uh, consideration will be given to opening Chongying Street as a tourist attraction. Because currently, if a Hong Kong citizen would like to visit Chongying Street, you need to apply for a CAP. Three questions. The first question is about planning upon excite, uh, uh, excite, uh, uh, releasing the land. So maybe Mr. Wong from PD can answer the question. First question about land uses. For land to be released from this exercise, well, it is mainly for conservation, but then about 90 hectares of land will be within the river loop. And for this river loop area, as a result of the strengthening of the Shenzhen River, that piece of land has become part of Hong Kong. So, the under the uh, Shenzhen River training project, some sludge will be uh, put there and will form a piece of a uh, flat land and the ecological value is relatively lower because there is this contaminated uh, sludge there. So uh, there will be opportunities for development in that zone. Three years ago, we started an in-depth uh, planning study on the loop. Uh, we are nearing completion on that study, and we have engaged uh, two stages of PE. And in the second uh, PE exercise that was completed in the summer last year, and the society has forged a consensus to use the land for uh, higher education purposes, supplemented by high tech industries and cultural and creative industries. 
So we hope to promote uh, economic development of Hong Kong on those fronts. So for now, the uh, study is nearing completion, and we hope to complete the study by the end of this year. And step by step, we will be implementing the scheme in the loop. Now, secondly, on environment and uh, conservation. In developing the loop and the FCA on the whole, in our planning process, we have uh, done strategic um, environmental assessment uh, study. And in the uh, loop, we have done a comprehensive EIA to ensure that the environment will be will not be destroyed. Thirdly, about ecotourism. At the FCA study, we have come up with uh, some suggestions on ecotourism and recreational development. A cycling track and some hiking trails are part of the suggestions made. We hope to um, organize activities which are in line with the historical heritage in the district and that we will not be uh, making destruction to the environment and we would do everything to um, develop the local economy there. Mr. Yao, about the reduction in the FCA, the public funds. Okay, um, there are two aspects of work. One is related to legislation and then the second is the building of the secondary boundary, uh, boundary fence. And actually the funding of that has been um, endorsed by the um, LESCO. Uh, can you give us the figure? Okay, we will supply the figure later on. Now as for the question of Chongying Street, actually it falls within the first stage FCA reduction and we have uh, treaded very carefully then in Chongying Street and Sha Tao Kok. Um, the major question is we don't have a proper boundary control point facilities. And if that is going to be opened up, then that is going to create a security problems. And uh, because of constraints in the environment or the geography there, there, is, uh, there isn't any way to build a, a BCP. So that's why we want to maintain those uh, sites within the FCA boundaries. I want to follow up on my first question. Uh, the government says that it has uh, made a planning which has been taken to uh, public consultation. Uh, a lot of uh, individual travelers from the mainland have uh, come across to uh, Northeast NT and they have pushed up uh, prices and so on. There have been views that uh, whether shopping malls can be built around the uh, boundary area so that uh, the, the impact on residents in Shanghai can be minimized. Now that uh, falls under the um, district of Lok Ma Chau. So would the administration consider gauging public views on that point? That is, Apart from the several uh, industries that the administration mentioned, would you be consider um, installing commercial facilities there or building commercial facilities there? On ecotourism, do you have a time frame in mind? Mr. Wong, on your first question about commercial use, because the FCA it's a uh, uh, hilly terrain, and it is um, comprises size with a high e ecological value. Now, for major developments, our plan is to uh, build uh, the major developments in northeast anti at land which has uh, to which uh, destruction has already been made, and we don't think that uh, major developments are fit for. Um, FCA areas. Now, for districts around the BCP, and if a suitable sites can be identified, we can um, 
put them to commercial uses related to um, boundary crossing facilities like the Mankamto. Um, we can uh, build a development corridor. But then the development mode for that kind of facility is different from that in urban areas. We're just uh, trying to create a cluster of commercial facilities, providing shopping um, facilities to um, people. So that we will study in the next stage. That's our thinking for the moment. As for recreational facilities, the timetable we need uh, to discuss with the relevant government departments based on their existing uh, mechanism, including um, the resource allocation mechanism. And actually, we have this outline plan, and then we will be continuing our discussion with the relevant government departments. Mr. Yao, I want to supplement for the entire uh, project. Uh, for the building the fence is a total of six hundred and fifty million dollars. If we want to develop tourist sports in the areas, would you be consulting the district councils? And actually on the border uh F CA study and the loop study, we have been discussing with the district councils and the rural committees on these two projects because it covers a vast area. And if we come to a stage where we can take some of the facilities forward, we will consult them again. Mr. Yu, Chairman, would you be able to give us uh, the diagrams of the relevant facilities so that we can uh, further exchange. Yes, we can provide the uh, diagrams after the meeting. Mr. Chen Ha Khan, Sha Tao Kok is a squat area. Uh, I go there once every three to four months. So I want to um, ask some questions about detailed uh, arrangements. When the um, first Phase FCA was opened up. There were some problems, and they moved back of back with the uh, boundary. And then those people living uh, areas excised from the uh, FCA reduction, they don't have to uh, get a CAP anymore. Uh, but then these areas are quite quite remote, and then uh, they have to frequent uh, facilities in Sha Tao Kok Town, uh, facilities like libraries, markets, and so on. Now, if you are moving backward the uh, boundary, then they are left without uh, any CAP. And then every time they want to visit the Shatao Kok town uh, to get daily necessities, they have to go to the police and get a CAP before they, they, they can do that. So this is quite irritating. So if we want to move backwards again the um, boundary, would the same problem arise? Um, originally, the residents were uh, enjoying all sorts of convenience with the CP CAP on hand. But now they have to uh, get CAP every time they have to go into a restricted or FCA zone. And then the police may make things difficult for them. And have you made an assessment that after the second stage FCA reduction, how many residents will be affected in the way that I mentioned? If there is a this situation, how are you going to address the problem? That's my first question. Secondly, um, members, uh, Chairman, you may recall that under FCA reduction, the uh, Sha Tao Kok Town and the Chongying Streets should also be excised um, as well. Because the zone uh, carries historical value and can be used for eco tourism. And actually, a lot of the residents in that district have written us, uh, to us urging that we open up the Sha Tao Kok Town. Now, why is it that the administration is still using this excuse of n not having a proper BCP there? Uh, to not open up the Chateau Cock Town. Well, uh, to the left of that area, that there is this uh, Chateau Cock BCP. So can we 
actually extend that part or actually use that uh, Sha Tao Kok uh, BCP to the left to, uh, to, to allow people to cross the boundary and then that can be uh, made use of to address the problem I've mentioned. Administration, please. Mr. Yao. Thank you, Chairman and Mr. Chen. Some residents uh, used uh, live in the FCA, used to live in FCA, and then the the air, the, the, the the living area has been excised, and then um, they don't live in FCA anymore. In the first stage or the second stage of FCA reduction, a policy has been that that uh, if residents live in land excised from FCA, we will give them the appropriate uh, CAP still so that they can actually go into the FCA um, again so that they can still engage in activities that they used to, to engage in. So that's uh, well, we've already done that in the first stage. But then there are cases where residents have friends or children um, they these people to, uh, to don't live in that area and then they have to go into the um, the excised FCA in the past uh, the residents can the uh, serve as a guarantee for their application of the CAP but then now they live in excised area then they can't play that role again but then in the um, granting of CAP, we will look at whether there is a real need for people to go into the FCA. And if these people do have a relationship with people living in the FCA, like their children, and they have to uh, liaise uh, on a daily basis with their, with their family members, and they can still apply for a visitor permit uh, to go into the FCA. Now for the second stage, the problem may be less serious because if you look at the map, the um, the uh, the the reduction under the reduction there is a still this uh, boundary uh, patrol road left. There is only one uh, boundary patrol road left, so people can really um, utilize or patronize the facilities around the excised areas. Now, as for opening up the uh, Chongying Street and Sha Tao Kok, we understand or appreciate residents' views. The aim of the FCA reduction is really to provide convenience to the residents so that people don't have to have a CAP uh, in uh, living or engaging in activities in that area. But then we have to look at the actual situation again. In Chongying Street, there is this constraint that we don't have a proper BCP. And then if that is the case and people can go in and out freely, then people can go ar across the boundary freely and that will create a, a very serious problem. So we try to understand whether there is this some midway solutions and we might be um, sort of imp uh, coming up with some uh, limited uh, relaxation for residents to provide um, convenience to residents that this is something that we will continue discussing with the residents. But uh, a full uh, a full fledged opening up uh, is going to create a problem. Mr. Chen, and you said that there is a CAP. Is it uh, to be applied on a uh, Case by case basis, or is it going to be a, a long term permanent arrangement? Yes, a long term arrangement. Ms. Sitho, uh, thank you, Chairman. I want to raise a question on Chongying Street. I have to admit that I've never been to the place. Uh, last time when the FCA was opened up, uh, Mrs. Carrie Lam, the then Director, uh, Secretary for Development, uh, took it on a visit and we understand what the arrangements were there, how the fence will be put up and how the boundary will be moved uh, backward. But I didn't have the chance of visiting Chongying Street. When we talked about the uh, restriction on powdered milk, we also touched on the issue of uh, Chongying Street. Now, Chongying Street remains 
an FCA, but from the uh, entering from the NE Northeast uh, to the Chongying Street, there is no boundary um, or a border control arrangement. Um, we read from the news reports that even though there uh, is a restriction on powdered milk in other places of Hong Kong, then people can still carry powdered milk, powdered unlimited across a uh, Chongying Street. So, can the administration? Can you tell us why you don't want to set up a BCP there? Now, I object uh, to the restriction on milk powdered, but but then since the order is now here with us. We try to make it uh, work smoothly. Now, why is it that uh, when Chongying Street is uh, still within FCA, and then there is no boundary control there? Uh, so, what what kind of uh, solutions should we be proposing to this uh, sort of dilemma situation? P.S. In the absence of photographs and plans, it will be difficult to describe what Chongying Street is like. Basically, it is a narrow street, yes, a short one. And then the boundary between Hong Kong and the mainland um, is the middle, the center of the uh, street. And the distance is, uh, the width is quite like the distance between myself and Mr. Ho. So it will be impossible to have a physical barrier there. As to the milk ban, um, the customs has told us that yes, the circumstances are quite unique, but then they have already stepped up their patrol to the shops in Chongying Street. They have also talked to the Chamber of Commerce there as well as the Rule Committee in relation to the arrangement of the new regulation. Uh, so far, law enforcement hasn't presented any difficulties according to the customs. Miss it Hall, well, We've been told verbally there hasn't been any law enforcement difficulties and ignore the loophole. Uh, I think we need to make use of the area close to the FCA to develop a shopping outlet. Now, if people are only interested to come to Hong Kong for shopping purposes, I think it's better to set up the outlets uh, along the FCA. So perhaps the very unique circumstances of Chongying Street can be turned into a place for business and shopping. I think the government needs some innovation to turn this into a reality. Mr. Yao, anything to say? I note the point. Well, if I may also comment on Chongying Street. Has it got a hundred years history of 50 years? Was it there from the beginning? Yes. It is very unique. So even in the absence of a home return permit, we, you can still go to Chongying Street. Yes, in theory you can, but you need to get the closed area permit from the police. But then it has been in existence for a long time, and local residents have said that it is a unique place. Uh, I think uh, we need to think more about it. For the FCA, we are going to excise certain areas from the FCA. Of course, the present exercise hasn't got too much with Chongying Street, but then some members have complained to me, saying that now that we have reduced the FCA, probably it's more a question for the police. Some local residents say, for example, they weren't, they aren't indigenous villages. Does it mean that um, even if they've moved to such an area, they still not get permission to go to Chongyin Street? That is, they still require an FAP. Or is it the case that anyone residing there will en enjoy the right to go to Chongyin Street? So maybe police, Mr. Chairman, for Chongying Street, it is within the FCA of Shatou Kok. Anybody with a permit for Shatou Kok would need an endorsement to give permission to go to Chongying Street. It doesn't mean that when you have a uh, CP for Shatou Kok, you automatically can go to Chongying Street. 
Now we have to find out whether there is a genuine purpose to go to Chongyin Street. If he lives there, if he works there, then we'll give permission. Does it mean that there is a change in relation to Chongyin Street? I think in the past, Sha Tao Kok villages don't, didn't need an endorsement to go to Chongyin Street. It is a new policy, not a new policy. It has always been like that. For Chongyin Street, it requires uh, endorsement. What are the conditions? At the time of application, you need to prove that you work there or you live there. So living there, is it one of the conditions? Yes. So if you live there, then you can go to Chungya Street, or if you work there. We have heard that a person lives there, and yet he is not able to go there. If he lives in the frontier close area, if he's got nothing to do with Chongyun Street, he, he may not be given the permission. Why not? Because if he lives in the FCA of Sha Tao Kok, and then Chongyun Street is a place for shopping purposes, that's the focus of Sha Tao Kok life. Why is it that he may not get the permission? Now, for holders of the uh, CAP of Sha Tao Kok, most permit holders can go to Chongyin Street, but if somebody only lives there or he only uh, lives there uh, in the form of a bed space, then he may not get the permit. Or if he doesn't uh, take the initiative to apply for it, then he hasn't got the endorsement. So it depends on the uh, justification. If he applies and if he can prove that there is a genuine need, usually we will give the endorsement. But this happen. Somebody lives there. He applies to you, and you reject his application, and so he can't go there. Do you have the data? Yes, there are such cases, but maybe not many. Probably the justification is not adequate. It's not strong enough. Well, I think there is a need to review this point. This is because if he, you have given him a CP to live in Sha Tao Kok, then people easily get the impression that indigenous villagers can go to Chongyin Street but not um, new arrivals to Sha Tao Kok. There aren't too many places to go. Now, if you live there, you expect to be given the endorsement, so would it be right to turn down the application? Now, with the um, two stages soon to be implemented, I think you need to be more people-oriented. Otherwise, um, local residents and local council members um, would continue to complain. So I just wonder if you can give us some information um, in relation to this point. Well, basically, we follow the government's guidelines. What guidelines? Uh, guidelines from the Security Bureau concerning the CAPs. We look at the justification. Uh, it depends on the evidence produced by the applicant. If there's evidence, if there is adequate information, generally speaking, we give approval. Mr. Yu Xiwing, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, can I talk about the Shenzhen Bay Bridge? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, no, it doesn't belong to this part. Basically, it doesn't belong to the area covered by the FCA order. So if you are, you go to the electrical brief, there is a map, and you can see that the bridge is not being uh, covered. All right, members. Yes, Mr. Chen, if I may have one more question. We are going to have conservation and development. Um, in the area to be excised. 
Um, but then Shuttlecock Road is quite narrow. During the weekend, it is already very congested. And then some people would like to ride on a bicycle, and it is quite a high risk activity. The cyclists are riding by the roadside. When you have two large coaches passing each other, then it is quite tight. So if the administration is thinking that land will be released from the reduction of the FCA, you may be having large scale development. In that case, Shatow Court Road, as it stands, can't cope with the extra traffic. Understand that the District Council has been asking for the widening of Shuttle Court Road for a long time, but so far the administration is quite negative in its response, saying that there's no plan to do so. Now, you are going to release such a large area of land, and you have planned a lot of developments. So how are you going to deal with the situation if you don't plan for the widening of the road? AD, if I may clarify one point. As far as the um, land use planning for the close area, metropolitan-like development hasn't been planned for. But then land will be released. We are thinking of appropriate land uses. And then during the weekends, Probably more people will be visiting the um, released area, so there will be an increase in traffic. For the land uses in the land released, we do um, plan for uh, widening of certain roads, like Lima Hang Road and Takuling Road, so that the highways department can look at their priorities and implement the projects. Well, at a broader uh, level, in the future, Ping Che, Takuling, well, Kutong North, Fanning North will be the focal points of development just south of the area released. For the transport needs, We'll be looking at a trans uh, a railway led system. Of course, there will be new roads like Fanning Bypass, and it will be connected to Tolo Highway. So uh, it will be connected at the place where we have Fanning North and Mankam Toll. In other words, well, few vehicles would then need to go to Shatow Cock Road or the roundabout of Shatow Cock. Uh, any, any supplement? I haven't got much to add by way of the road design. Well, uh, yes, during the weekend, we have seen an increase in vehicular traffic and pedestrian traffic. We've deployed more police to make sure that there won't be congestion or um, high-risk activities. I think things are still under control, as the first phase has been introduced uh, for a year. Another question, just a quick point, uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Yao, for the amendment here, is it related to the future development of the River Loop, yes, it covers the entire River Loop. So the land released will be for future development. Yes, uh, that will part of the land release will cover the River Loop. Uh, Mr. Yu C. Wing, my question is this: After the first stage reduction, uh, has the problem of illegal um, immigrant worsened. Has the administ administration stepped up measures in combating illegal immigration activities? Uh, police, please. Thank you, Chairman. After the opening up, there has not been increase in the number of illegal immigrants, and in actual fact, there ha is has been a slight decrease. And also, the crime uh, figures are more or less uh, the same in the past. Why is that? There is a slight drop. No specific reasons. 
In 2011, we arrested 66 IIs. And after the opening up, is 57 people arrested. Other questions from members? If not, then uh, we've had some discussions on the FCA and the impact of the order on residents. Because after the first stage uh, reduction, we have gained some experience and there are some problems identified. But uh, for the uh, second stage, it doesn't uh, affect so many residents, but still we have to uh, be pre prepared for problems that are likely to arise. Indigenous villages or new arrivals would have to be uh, operating or having activities in the um, FCA areas, and you, the issue of CAP has to be considered. All right, if not, uh, if no further question, and then we go to the clause by clause uh, scrutiny stage. But before that, um, my thinking is that we would not proceed with a public hearing. Uh, do you agree with this? Members raised that there are residents who may have uh, some opinions. Chairman, you also mentioned about district council. Do we have to do anything in that regard? Uh, if we have a public hearing, then we might be uh, hearing some differing views. So your opinion is that we do need a public hearing, is that right? Well, we can further discuss this. Uh, Perhaps uh, we can ask the um, deputations or bodies to write to us to express their opinions. If there are many of them, perhaps we can think about uh, holding a public hearing. Ms. Sit Ho, uh, I don't think we would object to your amendment. And now so much land has been released, and we have great concerns on town planning and conservation. And uh, the landowners and the green groups will be very concerned about how the land will be used. So, Chairman, I think we can ask uh, deputations to uh, voice their opinions. Uh, they would not uh, probably uh, object to the plan, but they might have views on how the land will be used in the future or planned in the future. Yes. Mr. Yu Siwing? In the first stage, uh, FCA reduction, has the administration conducted any public consultation? Any other questions? If not, then administration, your response, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I want to um, supplement a bit on the public consultation. This is a second phase in the whole entire FCA reduction exercise. This is going to be a long process. We started uh, the we initiated the idea in 2003, and then uh, we took several years to um, do public consultation, and there were revisions in the land to be excised. And finally, in 2008, the administration presented the final proposal, and during the consultation. Exercises. We went to district councils, electrical, uh, TPB, uh, the advisory council environment, and rural committees, and so on. So we've uh, actually we've done a wide uh, consultation. So that's uh, for the FCA reduction on the technical side. But then, and also, we've also consulted. Um, district councils, electrical, and so on, on other aspects. Now we've come to the second stage of the entire project. And actually, the papers we prepared have been submitted to the district councils concerned. We, so far, we haven't received any um, submissions from them. So the so what I want to say is the process is quite lengthy, and we involve different levels of the society and different uh, Groups have expressed their views to us, and revisions have been made uh, in response. Mr. Chen Hak Ken, if I remember correctly, in the first FCA 
a reduction exercise. The administration um, discussed with the relevant uh, electrical panel, um, as what the secretary said, the views offered by the district councils and rural committees have been incorporated in the revised proposal. I don't object uh, members' uh, suggestion that we should hear the public's uh, opinion, but I think we should focus on the um, revisions in the order or the amendments in the order. Now, if we are concerned about the future land uses of the land released, um, maybe we can collect the opinions from the public and then we can forward them um, for consideration by the development panel. I think the relevant subjects are being discussed by the development panel, uh, i.e. on the use of uh, land in NENT and also um, what sort of uses should be put to the land released uh, from the FCA. So I don't think there is a conflict here. I think we should focus on the um, dealing with the FCA amendment order, we just leave the uh, land use to the part to the development panel. I think they would be organizing a major uh, consultation exercises in that regard. Yes, uh, you said that you have uh, forwarded or submitted the uh, the papers to the district councils and they haven't come back, yes? Well, I think uh, it's very important to consult district councils because on the district level, their opinions will be very valuable. Since the um, district councils and uh, bodies at the district level haven't been coming back with opinions, I think this is something that we should uh, take heed of, definitely. I think we should uh, sort of uh, stock take at certain stages. Uh, Mr. Chen uh, and I went on a visit to Korea, and then they held this uh, um, uh, residence gathering with uh, around 4,000 people participating. Now, they are such a strong government, but they still keep on listening to people's views at various stages. Um, so I think we should take reference from that. And I think the electrical or the administration are obliged to provide a flat platform for people to air their views. The residents may share experience on the implementation of the order. I think we should have an open mind in taking heed of people's views. Uh, Mr. Yao, uh, thank you. In the amendment order, we have uh, submitted to the relevant district council. But for the implementation of the entire project, actually, we have uh, consulted them several times in the past. The amendment order deals mainly with the demarcation of the boundary. And many members mentioned about land uses. And actually, in the first stage uh, exercise, the administration has listened to views uh, on that front. And members are concerned about whether problems will arise in the implementation of the order. So the administration should uh, take note of that. If we want to consult, we should consult on the matter uh, in the order, i.e. Uh, where to draw the uh, coordinates and so on. And if we do consultation uh, on that, that is not uh, doesn't carry much meaning. I think we should um, upload perhaps on the web information that uh, people can write in on their views on the future land uses. Now, if we find that a lot of people have a lot of views, then we don't rule out the possibility of uh, holding a public hearing. We can consider that. But if our focus is on the land uses, then this is really not the focus of this amendment order 2013. So is that arrangement acceptable to members? Yes. 
If that is the case, we'll invite uh, the public to write in to express their views. Now, if there is no further question, then we can go through the amendment order clause by clause. So, would uh, the administration take us through the um, amendment order? Thank you, Chairman. We have with us the marked up copy. Well, shall I suggest that we use the marked up copy? Page one. And then we'll first take a look at the enforcement date, and then we'll talk, take up the. Uh, will you? We will we'll make use of the marked up co copy. Well, we. We'll the uh, order comes into operation on the tenth of June, twenty thirteen. You talked about. Um, consulting the relevant stakeholders, but then the um, order will commence operation on the 10th of June. Um, then should we be setting a deadline for submissions to come back from the public? That would be better. Yes, of course, we would do that. The clerk will, um, based on our existing time but table, go ahead with um, um, inviting public submissions through the Internet. <laughs> Yes. Clear yes. The commencement of the order is the 10th of June 2013. We understand that in the f first a few days after the um, uh, the commencement day, people might want to uh, visit the area um, to take a look. Uh, so we chose a Monday to be the commencement day. Any question from members? The second section is Frontier Closed Area Order Amended. Um, it sets the aim, it lays out the aim of the amendment order here. Now, section three. Uh, please look at the markup version. Why is it that we change sixty-five to seventy-four? Uh, when you look at the table, you will see that uh, for the entire FCA, we have used a very detailed method to plot um, sixty to seventy uh, points. Because there is a reduction in the FCA, and especially in the Lokma Chow area, there would be uh, different points uh, covered in that area. So um, we changed uh, the number of points from 65 to 74, and that tallies with the table beneath. Yes, please go on. The coordinates are based on Hong Kong 1980 grid system. I mentioned that we use a more accurate uh, grid system to plot the points along the boundary. I think the, it's a more accurate system. Now, if members uh, uh, have any questions in, my, in this process, please feel free to raise them. The table beneath is to uh, you make use of uh, 74 points to outline the entire FCA. So I'm, I'm not going to dwell on the details of the individual points. So, so that's uh, the concept of the points here. Chairman, we, uh, we have no way to check whether the points uh, that you uh, plot here are correct or not, but we have to trust in our technocrats. Now, has, my question is, has the um, 
the secondary boundary fence been built? Has that been built? And that is uh, goes to tell people that people should not uh, go beyond that uh, fence. So have we built the fence uh, to make it clear to everyone that they should not uh, go beyond the fence? Yes. It involves a new boundary patrol road which has been moved northwards. And the uh, fences to the north and south of the new boundary patrol road have already been completed. Well, I understand uh, members' difficulty in comprehending the uh, different points uh, mentioned here. But then we do have some uh, maps or diagrams or plans uh, following. And you can tell um, the uh, scale of the reduction from these um, diagrams. Well, I don't think we need to dwell on the points, uh, the coordinates here, right? So between the two um, fences, and there is a road uh, in the middle. And I think that there are some surveillance systems um, to go together with the fences, right? Apart from the monitoring system, what 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 what, uh, what other facilities are there? Yes, uh, it's a northern side and a uh, southern side, um, 3.5 meters tall, and it is um, at a slanting angle at the top. Um, there's one higher and one lower uh, sensors. Uh, so if somebody cr tries to climb over it or somebody tries to cut it, then uh, it will be triggered. We have 25 cameras um, on watch 24 hours a day. And within the system, we have also got a image detection system. If some images appear and if they deviate from the um, original picture, then a warning will be given out to the south. We have the secondary uh, fence. This is to indicate to the members of public that uh, they shouldn't venture into the frontier cruise area and not to uh, go to the primary um, boundary fence. So the marked up copy from 001 to 0020, they give us the points as well as the diagrams. Any questions? Yes, Mr. Gio. There were 50 plus cases of illegal immigration. So what did they do? It was a deliberate attempt, right? So did they cut open the fence? Well, for Shuttlecock, either they tried to come by the huge road, uh, cut the fence by water route, or they will try to um, attach themselves to the bottom of a vehicle. Um, how about the scale of the fence? The fence isn't very tall. Um, for Shuttlecock, um, it's a hilly area. Uh, what about the percentage? Uh, more come by water, fewer by land. But then last year, um, a certain section of the fence was broken during the number 10 typhoon signal. And so there were a bit more um, illegal immigrants over the period of time. But still, we're talking about a couple of them on a daily basis. All right, in this case, we move on to the uh, marked up copy for the FCA permission to enter notice. Um, Mr. Yao, please uh, walk us through for the marked up version. First of all, it starts by including an additional sentence. The coordinates that are included in the fourth column of this part are based on the Hong Kong 1980 grid system. Just like the previous amendment order, we try to apply a new system to refer to the points. And again, it will come into operation on the same day as the last one, that is the 10th of June. And then, we have the schedule 
And then for boundary crossing passengers and drivers, they will be given exemption if they follow a particular route. Then and that means they don't need to get a CAP. If you permit, I don't intend to go into the details. We are talking about two main types of amendments here. First of all, the boundary of the FCA has been set back. There is moved northwards, so the ponds have to be relocated. That's the first one. Second, as a result of the use of a new grid system, so um, instead of having uh, reference numbers like KK so and so forth, we are now using the uh, northern coordinates or the east. Uh, Eastern coordinates. So we just want to update the references. If members are interested in a particular item, uh, feel free to raise the question. So if you are not particularly interested in a particular point, I would just say that this is sort of a um, changing the presentation methodology. No questions? All right. Again, 65 is being changed to 75. Oh, sorry. I, I, I got it wrong. That's from the last one. Uh, that's all for this one. Sorry about that. That's all for this one. Well, in this case, I think we have already examined the content of the um, Amendment order. Well, maybe the clerk can tell us about the way forward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, for the legislative timetable for the amendment order and the amendment notice, well, the expiry of scrutiny period is the 15th of May. If you want to extend the extended period, it can be extended to the 5th of June. Members, do you think we need to extend it? How are we going to issue a notice to invite public opinions? What about the timing? It can be uploaded onto the website of the Ledge Code, calling for written submissions. Is there a relationship between the um, calling for written submissions and the need to extend the scrutiny period? If we don't extend the scrutiny period, then the deadline for giving notice of amendment will be the 8th of May. And that means uh, we have to close the submission period uh, at, on the day before the 8th of May. So 8th of May, we only try to extend the scrutiny period if uh, we have any submissions. If of May, just for to satisfy my curiosity, probably by then the filibustering hasn't ended. Do we stand any chance to extend the scrutiny? Well, according to the rules of procedure, uh, at a electrical meeting, we'll deal with all the government motions first before we will move on to members' motions. In simple terms, it means that we have to deal with the appropriation bill, which is underway, uh, before attending to, say, a member's motion to extend the scrutiny period. So you won't stand a chance to move a motion to extend the scrutiny period. Well, as long as we are still um, having the debate about the appropriation bill, then there's no way we can do anything about it. Well, um, I don't think we can get to extend the period. Well, <clears throat> that means we have to look at the date of the 8th of May. We'll see how many submissions we've received. I think probably. Well, I don't see any chance. If I can't move a motion, then I can't do it. Is that the case? Uh, this may be the case. This technical point. Well, no way can tell when the filibustering will end. Mr. Chairman, this one isn't controversial, quite unlike the import and export amendment regulation. I was very angry for us not to 
be able to look at the um, import and export amendment regulation concerning the milk ban. Uh, but I still want to allow the deputations to make submissions to us. Well, I suggest that if we're able to move a motion to extend the period on the 8th of May, then please do so. Otherwise, we just leave it in the hands of the development panel when there are written submissions. But of course, we have to say that uh, the development panel should have a discussion of the matter ASAP. Of course, we leave it in their hands. Uh, it has to do with the NDNT development. That's how I understand it. So perhaps they can take it up within that context. Yes? Sorry, speaker is off mic. I won't be taking up too much of your time, but I want to talk about the FCA and the Lok Ma Chow loop. In the past, there was very detailed public consultation. There were two full rounds of consultation in 08 and 09, and then in year 2010, it was completed. We approached different stakeholders. We went to individual villages. We um, went to the green groups. We also came to the Lechko and we went to the Hang Yi Kuk. So the study um, I mean the consultation outcome uh, had generated certain recommendations. They were included in the development permission areas. And the plans gazetted had received objections, and they have been dealt with by the town planning board. At that time, there weren't too many objections received, just over 20 of them. All of them have been dealt with. And in fact, um, this has gone to the sea in council. So the process has been completed for Lok Machau Loop. Again, there were two rounds of proper engagement. The second one was organized and completed in summer last year. We're now in the um, we're now working on the amendments to the OZP and we would like to have it completed and published in summer this year. So the consultation exercises concerning these two projects have been completed. Of course, we are now working on NENT. Last year, uh, we had the proposed uh, recommendations being um, pre we, we presented the recommendations. There were some objections. So for the new development areas in NENT, we'd like to revise them ASAP so that we can come back to the development panel of the LegCo. Thank you, AD. Well, having heard the administration, I propose that we go about it in this way. For the extension of the scrutiny period, the way I see it, the timing isn't on our side. And we have seen that there isn't any problem in the amendment exercise. Just now we're concerned about the policy implications. Yes, we can still have written submissions. Uh, if we spot any problems, they can be referred to the development panel. All right, so we won't be seeking an extension of the scrutiny period. And there's no way that we can do it. I don't see any chance of doing that. And um, so we'll follow what is suggested here. On the 3rd of May, I'm going to give a verbal reply, a report to the House Committee. And then it will come into effect on the 10th of June. All right. If we don't propose any amendments, and if members do not indicate the need to speak at a electrical meeting, then since we're not moving any amendments, of course, if a member would like to uh, make an amendment, he's always entitled to do that. And what about the deadline? The 8th of May. The 8th of May. So um, that will be notified to members. 
curiosity again. Even if we have amendments, I don't think we get to that, and it will then come into operation. I think it can be included in the agenda. Uh, it shows that this is the negative outcome of the filibustering. All right. I think the officials here are very happy because there's no way for us to move any amendments. So this is uh, paralyzing the electrical business. Yes, on this occasion, I agree with you. All right, thank you.